Hey there, all my fantastic fanatics. This is your man, Dr. Usher. And today we're going to be talking about what happens after we die. That seems to be a topic that nobody really wants to talk about because we don't want to admit that we're going to die someday. And, this, and let me just be real with you people. You and I have one thing in common. And it's not the fact that I'm black and you're white. No, it's not the fact that I'm a male and you're a female or whatever. The one thing we got in common is that one day we're going to die. No one's going to leave this planet alive. <laughs> so the question is, what happens after we die? Because there are so many people and so many teachings out there from different religions that teach different things. You got some that believe that when you die, you get reincarnated. Is that really true? I mean, you know, my job as Dr. Usher is to bring y'all the facts. So I'm going to bring you the facts. And then there are some people that believe that when you die, you fall asleep and you just sleep. And there are some people that believe that when you die, it's just over. Nothing happens. Just go black and beep. And you just did. But there is one person in history that we know of that died and came back to life. I mean, he was bona fide dead and came back to life. So I believe that if we're going to take anyone's opinion, especially if we're going to come from the scientific approach, if we're going to take anyone's opinion about life after death, then I believe we should take it from someone that's actually died and came back from the dead. It's just my opinion. I mean, you know, if you've gone to California and you've been around California, you know, and would you take the advice of someone who's not been to California to tell you where to go and where not to go? I mean, if you've you been and I haven't been, then I'm going to ask you, hey, dude, tell me how to get around California because you've been there and I haven't. Well, same thing about this afterlife stuff. So what actually happens after we die? Well, let's take some words of Jesus real quick, because Jesus made a lot of statements about what's going to happen after we die. And so we should look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, 46, which says, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, of course, when I give you the Bible verses, I really want you to read the entire verse. I want you to read the entirety of Matthew 25. But we're going to focus on verse 46, where he says, When these people die, some will go to eternal punishment, and then others will go into eternal life. The wicked, immediately after death, will go into eternal punishment, and the righteous into eternal life. So to me, Jesus is letting us know that you're not going to go to sleep after you die. You're going to be either heaven or hell. But hey, um, let's look at what Jesus told this guy on the cross in Luke chapter 24, verse 43. And of course, there's Jesus in the middle and these two heathens on the left and right of him. And he tells one of them that seemed to be repentant. He says, truly, I say to you today, you'll be with me in paradise. Doesn't seem like we fall asleep after we die there. Then let's look at John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. It says, and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And anyone who believes in me shall never die. And then he asks this question, do you believe this? Hmm. Even though we die, we shall live, and those who believe in him shall never die. Hmm. Interesting. But let's look at this one. John chapter 5, verse 24. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come to judgment, but has passed from what? Death to life. So here we have again that when we die, we don't necessarily die. We pass on to eternity. And so the question is, when does eternity start? Eternity starts immediately after death. But 
some people might have an issue with this. So, because, you know, the Bible does talk about people who have fallen asleep. And so let's look at that real quick. Because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 13. It does talk about people who have fallen asleep. Okay, let's read what it says. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him, bring, oh, 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 sorry, let me reread that real quick. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Let me ask you a question. When Jesus comes back, now we know there's going to be a rapture. The Bible says those who are dead in Christ will rise. But those who are asleep, the Bible is telling us here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, that God will bring with him those who sleep. Now, if we are asleep and in the grave, how is it that God can bring us with him? Hmm, which leads me to this particular verse in the book of Revelations, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. I'm going to read all of it because I want you all to get the whole kick. And it says, After these things I looked and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all the nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb of God, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands and crying with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Hmm. Verse 9 talks about a large number of people that no one could number from every nation, tribe, people, and tongues. Now let me ask you this question, people. Who do you think those people are? Us. Because this is what I'm going to tell you about the, those who believe you'll fall asleep. You're, you are, the Bible says we are flesh and we have a spirit and we have a soul. And one thing I can tell you about our spirit is that our spirit never sleeps. So how is it that when you believe that we're going to go to sleep, your body sleeps, but your spirit does not. So I think that we need to reevaluate our belief system, you recognize that when we die or when our body goes to sleep, our spirit goes to Jesus. Well, you say, well, Rev, uh, why don't you prove that to me real quick? Well, I can, because in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says, and, it, it, and just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that, the judgment. So what happens is, when we die, we immediately go before God to be judged. But the Bible says, again, we just read the Bible verse. Those who live righteous will not... 1 John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus said, He does not come unto judgment, but has passed from death to life. Those who live for God, we don't pass through judgment. Jesus said that. So, don't believe me. Believe the one who actually died and came back to life. He's the authority. He's the only one in history that we know of that literally died. And they stuck a spear in his side that pierced his inner guts where blood and water came out. So we know he was good and dead. And three days later, old boy came back to life. And that old boy is called Jesus. So I believe that we should behoove, it would behoove us to, to believe what Jesus had to say about passing from life, from death to life. Because he's the only one that's actually come back from the dead. You know? And so, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42. This is a very interesting verse. It says, so it is with the resurrection of the dead. So a lot of people, let's talk about this resurrection of the dead. Because a lot of people confuse the afterlife with the resurrection of the dead. Now, when your body dies, it's going to go into the ground. Or it's going to be cremated or your ashes are going to be spread everywhere. But your spirit is going to be with God. Now, during the day of the resurrection or the time of the resurrection, that's when your body is going to be brought out of the grave and your spirit is going to go back into your body. 
And then we're going to have these things called glorified bodies. How do we know? Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42, what is sown is perishable, meaning our bodies. What is raised is imperishable, meaning that once we come back from the dead, that old rotten, stinky body that decays all the time is not going to perish anymore. It is sown in dishonor, but it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but it is then raised a spiritual body. Therefore, if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you this day that when you die, you're not going to fall asleep. You're not just going to go black. It's not just going to be over. But I've just given you enough proof from the one who came back from the dead that will tell you, that told you from his own mouth, that when you die, your spirit goes straight to judgment. If you didn't live for God, if you, didn't, if you did live for God, you bypass judgment and you go straight into heaven. That's what Jesus said. Don't argue with me because that's what Jesus said. But you say, well, you know, I believe that when people die, you know, uh, if they die like Hitler, what happens to Hitler when he dies? You know, he just disappeared. He vanished. He didn't face any judgment. You know, there are people that actually believe that when Hitler died, he just died. He didn't face any internal punishment. He didn't go to hell. Nothing happened to him. He just boop, ceased to live. And that was it. But again, if you believe that, then you're calling Jesus a liar because Matthew 25, 46 says, and these will go away into what? Eternal punishment. So those of you guys who believe in annihilation theology, meaning that you're, once you're dead, your body is just annihilated. You don't have an eternity in hell. Well, you're calling Jesus a liar because he says, but these go away into eternal punishment, meaning forever. So I want you to think about this as I let you go. You're going to die. Where are you going to spend eternity? This is your time to consider where are you going to go when you die. As soon as you finish watching this video and you're driving home or you're walking to the store, you could be hit by a car, you could be shot by a bullet. Something could take your life, a heart attack, anything could happen to you. Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Because you will spend eternity somewhere. If you don't live for Jesus, you will pass through the judgment and you will be sent to eternal punishment. That's Matthew 25, 46. If you do live for Jesus, you'll bypass judgment and you'll go straight into glory. So you have to decide this day, where do you want to spend eternity? Quit believing that foolishness that says you're going to be reincarnated or you're going to go to sleep or nothing's going to happen to you and you cease to exist. That's crap. The first law of energy is it's never created or destroyed. You are energy people. You're going to go somewhere for eternity. And that somewhere is heaven or hell. So you decide this day. You can either listen to the one that actually came back from the dead and told you what was going to happen. Or you can listen to all these idiots that never came back from the dead. Take your pick. Your choice. This is Dr. Usher saying I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Bye.